So I wanted to talk about bots. So what is a bot? Um, uh, we're, we're really talking about uh, things that will allow you to automate a task or make it very, very easy or things that you can like interact with uh, to, you know, solve some problem or answer some question. Uh, some great examples of, of, of bots um, are, you know, uh, bots that will tell you when the bus is coming or a bot that will uh, let you know where the nearest, uh, let's say, um, uh, 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 non-transaction fee uh, teller. <laughs> Sorry, I had a bit of a, a block there. <laughs> so it's, it's really uh, um, a lot of... Uh, of applications out there but why are bots so important I think the reason why bots are important is that uh, we are now getting into like what we're calling the Internet of Things Internet of Things uh, it, it just means like we just have billions of devices that's connected to uh, the Internet or they're somehow interconnected so, so that's really kind of like the the you know Reader's Digest version of, of Internet of Things of Internet of, of Things and people kind of you know are still kind of wrestling with what that really means but um, one important thing that uh, we will have is more connected devices in the future that's the reality by 2012 it's gonna be you know uh, I think they said like 10 times as many connected devices than we have now so we'll have billions uh, and it may be hundreds of billions of devices in a very short a window these can be anything from like your appliances your sprinkler systems all this stuff so the real big question a lot of times that you should ask is well how do you interact with these things or who's going to interact with these things and the reality is that a lot of times people need to interact with these things so you got to kind of build bots for that and so um the idea now maybe is to like kind of think about that and understand how the world is going to change because it is change is inevitable so uh what we've done in baltimore is that we started a bot bots for baltimore group and it was really really great um we had our first meeting last night uh, we talked about uh, you know, what do we really want to do with the group? Where can we explore? And we had some really great ideas. Um, you know, it's great for meetups, uh, you know, that come together and talk about a topic, you know, educate people, share knowledge, and it's fantastic. Uh, the one thing I wanted to see was I really want to do something. Like, let's actually have a hackathon for bots. So that's one thing that's coming. And when I, uh, you know, figure out when that date is, uh, with Matt, we'll, we'll, I'll post it, <laughs> but um, we're, that's one thing we're thinking about. Um, another thing that we feel like a, a great uh, intersection for, for bots uh, and how they can make an impact on people are like, how can it expose, you know, uh, you know, civic data? Like, you know, we have like Open Baltimore, uh, Maryland, uh, data.maryland.gov. It's tons of these uh, sites, that even the federal government uh, releases open data. And uh, it's great that this data is, um, is available but uh, not too many people have built a, a lot of applications unlocking that data or making it super easy to consume and you know I'm not trying to knock anybody it's been some really really great open uh, uh, data projects uh, civic hacking projects and I appreciate everybody that's working on that I'm not trying to slide anyone there uh, but what's happening is that uh, it's a lot of people that you know have to have a lot of insight a lot of technical insight they really have to understand the data set to be able to you know really unlock it and really just show like a, a specific view of the data for people um, a great example is uh, one time I actually uh, took um, a couple of data set disparate uh, data sets I actually took um, a map of or, or the locations of a school uh, of the schools in Baltimore City and also the, the locations of the, the city cameras um, where the traffic cams where people would run red light cameras uh, the idea of the, the cameras were we should put them around schools so that it, it, it'll teach people to slow down. And if not, you know, you penalize them. And so you, you instill this behavior of, hey, you're around a school. You don't want to catch a fine, which is great because overall, if people are driving slower, they have more time to react to children if they happen to run out. Um, also, uh, they, uh, they also um, have the ability to, um, the child has the ability to like visually probably pick up the car faster because slower moving objects are actually a lot easier to pick up than faster moving objects, I believe. <laughs> uh, but um, I think a slower car is actually uh, easier for a kid to avoid. Like that's that's the reality. Um, so the question that I asked was, hey, 
are these cameras really close enough? Um, and and the answer was no. I, I have the map, and I'll, I'll add the map so you guys can see that. Uh, but the idea was that um, it took me with like a weekend. It was only a couple hours, really, to kind of draw this map. Where, you know, I kind of had three layers, like the base, you know, of, of, of kind of like the ge geography of, of Baltimore, overlaid the schools, overlaid the cameras, and then people could visually see it. And I just made them two colored dots. I think I did red and blue. And you could see it, and it was like, oh, whoa, this is amazing. And uh, somebody actually took that map and evolved it and, and really got some of the cameras moved. I don't remember who did that, but I thought that that was amazing. That actually took it further than uh, what I did. But the reality is that um, that took me a very specific data set, and that was one slice to be able to, you know, produce something that people could see and go, oh, my God, this is amazing. Like, I, this, is, this is so powerful, and, and, it, and it really opened up people's eyes. But the reality is that, like, we need more of that, and we need uh, people to be able to interact and query uh, these data sets. And, and I think, really, the answer is our, our, our bots. That's, that's really it. I mean, it, it's, hey, uh, give me some human language or give me a couple of parameters and I'll go figure it out for you. And the reality is that, like, our world is going to become flooded with more data. It's not going to uh, slow down. It's actually going to increase. You know, the amount of data that, that we collect and the amount of data that we produce, the amount of devices that produce data, they're all going to go up. So we need to find clever ways of allowing people to interact with that data or, or really being able to aggregate it ask it questions and make some sense of it. So that's the reason why I think bots are so powerful. So, you know, I don't know, like, what what are your thoughts? This is just me kind of like looking out and, and playing the scenario games of, I kind of think the world's gonna be like this in five years. What do you think? Um, do you think bots will be important? Uh, if so, what are some of the cool things that, you know, you would like to see with bots? Uh, also, if you don't think bots will be that important, you think it's something like, you know, the DeLorean, and uh, if you haven't seen, like, Back to the Future, watch that, that's a great movie, <laughs> but, um, you know, a little bit of a history lesson there, uh, you know, if you feel that we kind of have, like, a, a DeLorean there with bots, you know, let me know, uh, I would love to hear your opinion, so, I'm gonna wrap this one up, thanks for watching, I appreciate you watching, please like the video if you liked it, uh, subscribe to the channel, ask me questions. Please, I love to answer questions. And also, I love to talk, so <laughs> thank you.